Okay. I'm back. Uh, doing live stream two days in a row. Uh, yesterday we did lots of uh, improvements to the area where you start the game. Uh, I did lots of improvements to the uh, editor and stuff. Uh, and I, we can just quickly look at uh, how the game looks right now. I'm thinking. So let me remove this nice cover image. Remove myself. And, and then we go to Sublime Text. And I'm just going to check that I actually have the latest code. Sometimes I sit in bed and program on my laptop. Git pull. Yeah, we didn't have the latest stuff. So we compile the game, run it. Let's see what we have. Okay, so this is how the game looks now. I can run around like this. I can grab this ledge. There is still a funny bug with uh, sometimes... Uh, there's two bugs here. Sometimes there's a line sort of here. Uh, that you might be able to see. Uh, that's when the camera moves and the tiles sort of overlap. Well, there is a gap between the, the tiles. And this might be... You know, it might be due to the UVs, like the UV ends up on a seam where it's just outside, like it's just on the border of the rect of this uh, two quads, uh, two, two triangles that make up this quad here. So you sometimes get a line here, something like that. There's several ways to fix this. You can make the texture slightly bigger. Uh, you can, uh, maybe you can snap the camera in like whole pixel increments, but that would make it a bit more choppy. Uh, but maybe there's some other way. I'm I'm not. Maybe I can move the camera by by like the pixel, some more pixel density thing. Uh, I mean these textures are scaled up, but maybe something is possible. I'm not completely sure. Um, that's one bug. Uh, let's see what more do we have. Uh, I can run around like this. Uh, yeah. Oh, what what was the other bug I was thinking about? Oh yeah. So I jump into the wall and sometimes I just get stuck like this. You see uh, how the sometimes it slides up and sometimes it just like now I now I press now I press and now I press now I press wait it doesn't always happen. Okay, uh, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't really do do the jump. You see it kind of glitch and then nothing happens. So uh, I'm just and then I check my OBS sound. Okay, it's good. Uh, so this is due to my bad physics system, uh, uh, or lack of physics system. Uh, it, when we uh, do update, when we do update player cat, maybe no, update play mode update. Let's see where this goes. Play mode start planet update. This is the update function that uh, updates this game mode where you run around like this. This one just goes over all the walls and then uses the collides function which in turn uses the get collision rec function in Raylib. It doesn't do anything fancy. Uh, this needs to be replaced at some point. We'll see if we get to that. Uh, and it should be replaced by maybe some kind of either UI slot in like box 2D or something or maybe I write my own like uh, if I don't need like if I don't want need to be able to like stack boxes stuff if I just want more simple resolving of physics, maybe I'll just write a GJK detection algorithm with an uh, expanding polyotype algorithm solver, which would also work for this. I've done that before in 2D. Okay, so in the game you can run around like this. There's this little editor and stuff uh, that I can bring up. Pre press F2. Uh, I added this snapping last time. I can turn off the snapping and I can change between blocks and entities. This is for placing where the player starts and stuff. We can run around like this, blah, 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 and we run over here. Another bug that I fixed from last time was that I couldn't flip these blocks. Uh, so now if I go to blocks here and do this, I can flip that one back and forth. The problem here was in the code. It was uh, uh, in uh, set render object static. Here I needed to negate, like if I want to flip it in x direction, I needed to set the 
the width of the source rectangle that I used to draw this texture, I need to set that to negative. The problem was in the destination rect, I also used the source rect.width, that's why it didn't work. So this one now takes a texture width here, and this one takes a texture width as well and negates it if flip x is true. And then it all works, and then I can flip this back and forth, and then I can make it all look nice like this. I mean, I'm gonna add more picks, uh, add more uh, different kind of tiles and add some kind of filling area in here so it all looks good but uh, Yeah, now at least I can have things facing that direction uh, like this Not just having them face to the east having face to the west as well uh, And then I also used uh, since I had a flip X thing I flipped some of these tiles so they, they, they line up nicely and uh, Yeah, uh, I did that that's all good. Uh, so, uh, what I want to do today is, I think I said bug fixing. I think it's gonna be maybe more editor coding, but some of it will be to sort of fix things that look wrong in the gameplay. One bug that I want to fix is maybe the glitching like this and then the physics stuff, but I'm not exactly sure where to start with that. What I'm gonna start with is some, ed some more pure editor coding. Uh, you see, this is very repetitive here. One reason for this being repetitive, that there's like the same texture here, the same texture here, is that uh, if we go into editor mode, I have actually four different uh, upwards facing tiles like this, but I'm not very good at swapping between them, like using the different ones. So I'm gonna make it possible in the editor mode to select multiple tiles and then have it randomly pick one of the ones in my selection like this, if you get what I mean. Uh, and then maybe I will make some more also. So there's like a great variety. Maybe I should make some that are like two, uh, two tiles long or something. On the other hand, those can just be boil down to, you know, being uh, one uh, to separated into two tiles. But yeah, so we get started with that. I have my coffee here. Uh, a big cup of coffee. I've been downtown today. Uh, I have had problems with my eyes recently. Uh, I get pain and I get dizzy. Turns out I probably, my old glasses were so scratched up that I got like a halo on everything I saw. And then I got very bad, uh, uh, yeah, I got dizzy, essentially. So I've ordered new glasses today, with very new fancy frames and all that. It's gonna be great, they come in two weeks. But right now I'm without glasses because it's actually better. I, I, I On a screen it's not that much of a problem, it's more on when it's far away. So this is fine. Okay, so we want to be able to select multiple things here. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to hold shift and click. Uh, you could drag also, but we're gonna start with hold shift and click, and then it selects multiple, and then we can draw with multiple, and it selects randomly one of the ones in that multiple of things. So we're gonna go to edit mode update. And let's see. And so. Where does it actually actually select things? Select the entity, that's not the one. We want selected block. Okay, here we go. It goes through all the blocks. The blocks are the, these things. You can see I can change between entities and blocks. Blocks are these. It goes through all the blocks and then it uh, makes like a source rectangle for each one, which is just uh, zero, zero, and then the size of the block. And then it makes it this destination rectangle, which is where it's supposed to draw it in the UI. And then it draws that thing. And then it checks, is the mouse pointer inside one of these rects? In that case, it draws the red rectangle. And if mouse button left is down, then it sets the selected box to the same index, which is in the loop here. You have four B, B is the block, B, is, B IDX is the index of it. So it sets that index. And if, uh, and then, yeah, so if I click with left mouse button, that is set. And if the current index is the set one, then it draws a green outline here, color A green. This is a, color A is a function I made to take the RGB part of a color and pair it up with an alpha. So it just does something like this. Takes the a color and an RGB and A and A come separately. Nothing weird. Okay. So 
we have a look. What we need to do here is we need a list of things here. I think we need sort of a map, uh, like a hash set or something. So we're going to try to do that. We take up another. I'm going to increase the font size a tiny bit here so it shows up very nicely on stream. But that's a bit too much. This is this is this is lagom as we say in Sweden. Uh, have a sip of coffee and then we talk a bit slower. Got too excited. So, oh, and of course, this is a selected entity. Where we want to be up here, selected block, but it's the same code. It just sort of duplicated. It's nothing wrong with duplicating code if it's just in two places and it's. Um, if you have lots of code uh, copied everywhere and it makes a problem when you change it, then you should sort of make some kind of abstraction, but this is fine, really. Okay. Selected block. Let's add a plural, selected blocks. And then uh, this int is a... The int here is an index into the blocks array up here. So let's try just making a map instead. So a map is like a dictionary in C-sharp, whatever you want. So it maps from an int to something else. I don't think there is in Odin a hash, like a hash. Well, there, you know, you can hash numbers, but, you know, a map that only has keys and no values. I don't think, I asked in the, in the, in here, I think, like, let me see, map. Um, I think I asked actually in discussions, in Discussions map. Okay, so I asked uh, here. I asked, is there something like a map, but more like a set only has key? I guess I could do map int throwaway type. Then this L4 person said map int struct. You can do that. Someone hearted this. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, map t bool also work pretty nice because map whatever will default to full. Okay, so map t struct will not take up any memory for the value since this, an em this is an empty struct. It just needs the type info. Uh, uh, right, right, right. Yeah, someone did like void is a distinct zero byte. Oh, then there's no concept of void, nothing is equivalent to it. It's funny with Discord and these, I think it's because they're changing names. Some people get like, his ginger bill, he's like g dot dot dot. Weird. Well, anyways, let's go up. Uh, let's go up and uh, get going with this then. So we just do this. Whatever, it's an empty struct. We could, of course, like, you know, Make a type def, uh, a, a define uh, something to, to struct that's empty. Let's not bother. Selected blocks. Ma it maps int to nothing. Uh, how does map work now again? Okay. Uh, so in my project in Sublime, I have added my cat game folder, the core folder in Odin, which is sort of the standard library, the vendor folder, which contains all the bindings, and the examples folder, which contains the demo file, which is kind of neat to have. Um, so I often like search, like, uh, okay, append, the function append appears in core built-in append map. No? Okay. Uh, maybe there wasn't a, such a good example after all. Like if I wanted to see how the standard library treats arrays, I could look at these. But the map, I think, just uses the bracket notation. I, I think it's more built in uh, map. Up, 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 up. Mm, okay, whatever. Let's just... <clears throat> yeah, how do I set the... Like, do I just go like em.selectedBlocks bidx equals like that? Does that set it? Like, oh, let's see what these people said. Mm, okay, I'm going to ask here. Uh, uh, yeah, but how do I set a value in the map then? 
if I use struct, do I do my map, my map idx equals, and how do I remove a value? Set it to nil? Those are my main questions. I could try this, but it's a bit funny to try maybe. I will get going while I wait for the answer. Okay. So selected blocks uh, is like that. Uh, yeah, and, and I guess if this is true that I remove a value by setting it to nil, then if it is that selected blocks bidx equals nil is not equal to nil, then it means it's inside the selection. Right. Does that compile? Okay. No, it doesn't work because my struct thing has no... Is, is a struct like that doesn't have a nil value. Hmm. Yeah, so that doesn't work. Let's look in the demo file. This is sort of how I often approach coding in Odin. So, oh, okay, here we go, here we go. Delete key, can delete a key. And this is how you add it. So I think this, you can delete it like that. And then exists Bob in M. Okay, so I'm gonna copy paste some of this to my uh, here, make a little comment. Okay, okay, okay. So, so we do bidx in, so this will check if bidx is in selected blocks. Very good. Uh, I think this is still the way I would add it, right? Let's see here. Yeah, I think so. And then delete key is for removing them. I will look at that in a bit. Okay, and this is the code where, down here is the code where we, we have some selected block. We have some selected block in the blocks. And then, we take out the texture. Okay, this is all. This might. Okay, okay, I know what to do here. So we need to pick. So let me show. I'm gonna pick these. Maybe these four. This one, this one, this one, and this one. I'm gonna pick all those four. And then I'm gonna pick one randomly. So what I will do here is like random block is editor block. Uh, Maybe I will even do a little pointer, so then we get a nil if it's not used. Uh, and then we do like this for key value. Can I just do key? I don't care about the block idx in em.selected blocks. Um, okay. So I need to, wait, I need to know how many there are, how many valid keys there are. Does the length, does the length of an, let's see here. Does the length of a map correspond to how many valid keys there are? Maybe we can actually just like check what len does. Maybe I can't because I'm stupid. Q built in small array. Not sure. Not sure. Let me do like this. I rem I I comment all this out to start. And then I go like format dot print ln len em dot select 
then the blocks compile it compiled okay so you see i can select multiple now that's what i wanted let's see what it says it says two does it say three now no yeah yes it does it's just a bit uh, it's just lagging behind up here okay that's very good so then we can just do like this uh we say uh, how do I can I index by can I do like indexing into a map because if I do the okay let's look in the demo again map type okay so this fetches by by the map key can I somehow uh, map type okay hmm I want to somehow uh, I want to somehow index I want to pick a random one okay but we're gonna see we're gonna see how we do it uh, num selection num selected okay the num selected if num selected is greater than zero then we write we say like random cell is and where is random uh, where, where is this helpers how do I do random numbers in this language uh, r and d uh, random random get where is that no that's the wrong one random Get random value. <laughs> there is one in Raylib. I guess I'll use that one. Uh -huh. uh, RL dot get random value from zero to between min and max, both included. Okay, so num selected might be num selected will be zero if it's zero. It will be zero if num selected is zero. Does that mean? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. So if num selected is one, then we will get something between zero and one here, which is what we want. Good. And then I will do like this. I'm not sure how to do the random indexing. Uh, Yeah, it's like as, uh, asking, can I index a map by index, or or do I have to count down a index variable? I I'm trying to fetch a random key from a map. Okay, but I will do that for now. So I have my indices in my selected blocks and random cell minus equals one. If random cell equals zero, think. So if, yeah, I think that's correct. Then random block is the pointer of em dot selected block no wait yes yeah, so you need to take this one random cell and then you need to go like em dot blocks editor memo editor memory the blocks are like this. Maybe like that. For some reason, the Raylib wants I-32s. Wait, or is it? Uh-huh. Odin usually likes working with normal integers and then some APIs because of 
sea heritage or something, they want specifically I-32s. So then sometimes you get a bit of this annoying stuff. <clears throat> okay, index. EM.selectedBlocks random cell must be an integer. Got struck. Okay, so selected blocks. Okay, so, wait. The key is actually an index. Wait a minute here. So I pick between... But wait. But if I pick this one, this one, this, this is not at zero. So this is like between five and eight, say. Mm. Wait, I'm not even using block index. Ah, okay, okay. So I'm supposed to use block index here. So I pick, I use pick from blocks using block index. That makes more sense. Okay, and then I'm just gonna try a print ln uh, random block. This will spew a lot of nonsense. So selecting randomly, now we should always, oh wait, it's select, oh. <laughs> I have no way to do like uh, selecting without holding shift should select one of them. Let's fix that. Um, okay, so we click with the left mouse button. If rl.is key down left shift. If left shift is down, then we add it, add it. If not, we clear em dot selected blocks. We clear it and then we set it. That will sort of reset our selection. See, and hold shift, and it works. Nice. I like this kind of stuff. I can even click in the same one. Okay. Let's see what the output says. It's spewing a lot. Now it says constantly the same one. If I select two, it's also constant. No, I didn't only select the one. So now it jumps between two different ones. So this is also working. Perfect. Um, let's scroll down a bit. Okay, so we have our random block. Let's remove that print. Remove this loop. Current block is random block uh, current okay how did wait oh i renamed it okay maybe this will work actually i used use current block down here then i remove this end comment Let's see random block oh so current block is then this and then i do like this if actually I could just wrap all this, it will always manage to choose some current block in here. So I can just do this. I mean, all, yeah, I think it will always happen. Can do that. Oh! From crashed. Excellent. I think it ran into something funny. Okay, it will crash again, I think. Okay, let's see what's wrong. Let's see what's wrong. Hmm. Maybe. Does it always succeed? This stuff. Let's see. Uh, if per block equals nil, pre FMT print ln nil 
nil curve block. Does that make any sense? Let's see if it's So wait a minute. Adding entities, no. Okay, I'm not even in the editor game mode yet. It's still not spewing anything. Because there's nothing selected. Now something is selected. Now we go nil curve block and then it crashed. Interesting. Should be a break here probably. But does that matter? Will this one even continue? Okay, so let's think here. We have selected one block, then num selected is one. Then we get the value between zero and look in Raylib, get random value. Because we get the value between zero and one, and then. Okay, so that's the problem here, I think. So we should be like minus one here. Because then you get the random between zero and zero, and then, yeah, so I think that's the problem. Let's try again. Nil curve block. Okay. Num selected is bigger than zero. We pick something between zero and num selected. Right. We pick something between zero and num selected. And oh, I think this one needs to be below because this will go to minus one immediately. And yeah, I think that's the problem right here. Yeah, so now you have that. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> it's constantly changing. Isn't this what you wanted? <laughs> I think it's supposed to do the swap when you click. So now I can now I can do what I wanted. But it's supposed to um It's supposed to do that when I um uh, It's supposed to do that when I uh, let's see, looking at it, the stream a bit. It's supposed to do that. I don't know what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. Can I have a sip of coffee? Look at. Okay, so we need to choose which of these we want once a frame. How do we do that? Where do, where do, where do we, the big first question is, where do we place this? When we click left mouse button and place, that's when it should like switch randomly. Or when we do the selection here maybe. We can do it at both cases. So, down here we click and spawn things. This is where it needs to sort of uh, update the random selection and stuff. So we do like a selected block. This would be look a bit strange because I have like a block. We will choose one of those to be our. We'll choose one of these to be our selected block. And then. Up. Okay. And selected block might then be, if it's zero, then that's okay. This is usually a problem with like, you want you want to use zero for the 
zero indexed, but then sometimes zero indexed means that you haven't initialized it. This is one of the pro most common pr trouble with uh, zero is initialization stuff that in many cases zero is fine, like initializing structs and stuff, but for indices it's a bit troublesome. What you can do is that the first block in the list is is there but it doesn't do anything. It's like a nil block. Uh, yeah, it's that's like it's not a perfect idea. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make check if this is not minus one. If em dot selected block it's not minus one. Then we say we take. Then we say current block equals em dot selected block. We also need to make sure that uh, if em dot selected block is bigger than length. Bigger or equals to len of em dot blocks. Then we say that em dot selected block equals zero. Select the first one. Arbitrary. It should be fine. Right. And then we take this and we say em dot selected block equals block index right and then we take this value put it there remove that let's make a pro uh, procedure out of this that's called update run Select random block, select random block, proc. Uh, like that. And it needs to take what's EM? EM is. Ed editor memory. EM is appointed to editor memory. Take that, cut it out, and then we go look, have a look. I will put it. Okay, we need to use it. What am I doing? We need. We need to use it. Where is the selection expanded? Is it up here? Adding entities. Oh yeah, it's this stuff. Okay, so we put it, we go here. Select random block. And so if you selected anything, then we say select random block EM. Remove this crap. And remember, delete E if I need it from that comment. Right, so that should work. Now we'll select those randomly. And it's also when we paint, when we put something out, we need to go here. I think it's here, select random block, because this is when you put out the wall piece. Okay, will it, will it work? Yes, it does. Just looks like it sometimes doesn't work because it's, um, um, I can't drag paint right now, which I also want to fix. Um, but the nice thing about this is now I can go like, I think these should, yeah. Uh, one thing I fixed since last stream is so that I can um, click again to, if I click somewhere where something already is, it replaces it. Pretty sure it does that anyways.
right? That looks a bit better. I don't know where I do, why there are stones in all these. I'm gonna probably make a variation without some of the stones inside. And then we will fill all this dead space down here up. And it will all look very nice. Very nice indeed. Okay, this wall needs to be flipped like this. I go over them and press X to flip. And this one I can't flip. Sorry, I think there was two on top of each other there. Why? Oh no, there was never mind. So I can select both these to like this, flip them. Which one do I have more of? That one. Flip flip. Doesn't look great, but it's a start. Mm -hmm. Select these four. Okay. Big improvement. Big improvement. This one needs like that. Here I do this. Right, save. Looking nice. Looking nice. Mm -hmm. Why? What weird that I thought I had, you know, see the green, the green dots is like where I, you can do a edge grab. Oh, okay. So it's if you replace it, uh, then the edge grabbing for the green dot disappears. Um, should probably fix that. Actually, I can fix it right away. So if there already is a block under a cursor, which is this one, this is if there's you make a brand new one. Look at wall, and then you have grab point. So then you can say wall dot grab point equals mem walls blah 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 grab point, uh, and then we can do this block under cursor equals this one blc blc. Block under cursor, B U C. So now we have a problem, undeclared name. Go back. And now it crashed. Why does it sometimes crash? I have to I should attach a debugger for when I hot reload and see what happens. See if someone is typing something. Okay, someone, I, I asked about the maps. And the maps are unordered, which I sort of knew, but I was thinking if there was some magic underneath. Uh, so indexing won't work out for you, but okay. But decreasing an index like that, iterating through will still work. So that's fine, that's fine. <clears throat> I'm going to attach a debugger. Did I just open Visual Studio Installer? Thanks. I'm going to attach the debugger and open. Then I will wait a bit. And then I will take my cat game. Then I will run with the debugger attached and try to catch this crash I get. Although I'm not sure, can I actually even hot reload with it attached? Because I'm not sure. Okay, let's try. So here is my stuff. Let's provoke something. We do this. I hot reload. Maybe it does work. And then 
I click save. Oh, okay, that's working for now. Whatever, we'll see. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, I was going to check if the grab points worked. Oh, this, so when you zoomed out, it's like super slow. Okay, so I'm putting out the grab points again. Ah! It crashed. Why didn't I get... Why didn't this... Catch my... Crash? Hmm? Now it's... Okay. Maybe. Hmm. Was it due to me just doing this? Yes. It crash. Ah ha ha, I'm out of bounds. Let's see here. So I click my left mouse button. Mm. Then I fetch my block under the cursor. Uh, okay. I think I have a stupid problem here. Uh, the debugger is a bit funny as usual. Um, block under cursor. It's minus one. Oh, it's minus one. And it's supposed to... Wait, I'm going to check my git history. Did I... Actually remove that check? Or did I just... Did you run with dash debug, the chat asks. Uh, yeah, I always do. And then now it worked. It was just that somehow I hadn't attached. I was, there was something. I think my build, here's my build script. Build.bat does. So this is how I do my hot reload. I only build the game, the DLL. If, so if catgame.dxe doesn't run, which this stuff does, then it only runs build game. Other one, otherwise, it runs build game and build main. And build main builds the shell exe that runs the other thing because it blows up if I try to build main while the game is running. So build game in that, and then runs Odin build dot, which builds the whole uh, package. My game DLL, my game package, so it tells it to build DLL. Up it as game dot DLL. With the debug symbols, and then I like, and then I like doing strict style, because uh, then it says like, oh, you use semicolons where you don't need to stop that. It's all good. Ah. Uh, yeah. But anyways, this is just this is just because a block under cursor is minus one. It's out of bounds, man. We're just normal bounds. Um. Where is it used then? So it's used down here. I can get away with doing like this. And then block on the cursor is not minus one. That will get me away from that problem. And then you need to kill the debugger because it hogs PDBs or something. That's why I, it's hard to do the debugging and hot reloading at the same time because hot reloading hugs PDBs. So in order to hot reload, you usually have to detach the debugger, compile, and then reattach the debugger. I don't know if anyone has any good idea for how to get around that. Uh, like, I don't think you can copy the PDB or anything. Maybe there's another debugger that doesn't lock it. Like, the best thing would be if the 
debugger itself actually copied out the PDB and everything and looked at that instead of locking the PDB file. Uh, but uh, yeah, Visual Studio is a bit funny, so it does that. Maybe I should try Visual Studio Code or uh, debug remedy remedy BG or whatever it's called. Anyways, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was uh, fixing this stuff. I was over here. So I've shown my debug mode, so I see the green things, and I do this and that and this and that and this and that, and then I click here and nothing happens. Wait, now something is weird. So now I... Now I can't place it unless there is already something there, which is just because... Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I, I made... this is a man-made bug. Th this does the check. Is it bigger or equal to zero? This code, this BUC is supposed to be in here. I, I just moved that out just now. So now I can place here, remove, and I can do this, and it the, the, the green plop stays. And I can save. Good, good, good. Run, 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 dash, 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 dash. Yeah, and you can climb up. You get a running start and you jump. Oh, did I? Did I make this distance bigger? I seem to. Ah, you can jump when you, just after you left the ledge, so you can do like a choop, choop. Oh, you have to be pro or something like that. Uh, might tweak that a bit. So it's all good. Quite happy with that. Okay, what am I going to do now? I had a couple of different bugs I wanted to address. Uh, one was the one where I w jump into a wall and it, it some, sometimes it doesn't go up the wall, sometimes it just... Uh, it aborts the jump. It's a bit, a bit hard to see, but sometimes it just gets stuck. Like, there you go. It gets, just got stuck and never went up. And that's because the feet, this green box, um, collides with something on one of these. Because these have their own colliders, like this and this and this and this and that. And then it collides with those. Which I would categorize as a problem with the physics system that I don't do any proper physics collision detection. I just check like, oh, am I, which direction, how much am I overlapping, which direction am I supposed to push the thing and not. I have to think a bit about how to best do the physics collision stuff. Um, I would probably implement some kind of GJK thing with some kind of resolver. I'm not sure I want to do that on stream. It's a bit... Uh, it will be me looking at a black screen for two hours. And then suddenly... I'd rather just explain it afterwards, how it how it went. Um, not this is supposed to have... the little edges as well. <clears throat> okay. Another thing I want to do here is uh, remove the fix the fix the how the there's a line appearing sometimes between here. Uh, it's like an I guess it's like an aliasing problem. You could call it, or you see a little bit of the sky behind between these two because they don't move properly and not exactly sure how to let's let's do some googling uh, Raylib this is not a, this is not a specific Raylib problem but I'm just gonna Raylib 
C between C between piles. Uh, um, aliasing between tiles. Hmm. Okay, this is some kind of this is some dude. That does a ten minute. One thing I'm thinking about is if the if you go to draw world. To draw texture pro, I send draw, draw texture pro. I send like um, I send like floating point numbers into it, and maybe those somehow mess up because it sort of moves the camera and then it. Uh, it gets a little gap between them but maybe it's just about which wrapping mode I set on my textures clamps the texture to the edge pixel in tiled mode okay what's tiled mode then doesn't say okay so repeat is zero uh, but I see if the repeat was true, okay, maybe because sometimes I see like a dark, sometimes I see dark stuff on the left edge here. So I was thinking if that's the, that there you saw, it's actually when I stop sort of. Yeah, there you go. That's a good repro. Nice jump, wait a bit. And then it doesn't happen again. I wonder how these look. Cat game. Level art. Which one is this? This is one of the ones with Good thing these are tiny. So it's this one, right? Yeah, it's this one. And then I wanted to clamp, so it would clamp the top one. But Maybe it doesn't actually work. Maybe it just it's just like UV like it picks on the other side of the UV of these two triangles that make up this thing. I've seen that behavior before. What's this? Mirrors and clamps to border texture. Maybe that's what I need. Okay. Because then it would like mirror it and clamp instead of just clamping. Not sure. Let's go to load texture and then we say rl dot set texture wrap x and then we go like mirror mirror clamp mirror mirror clamp hmm? will it blend is the question do, 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 do. Did I save my thing? Did it crash? Yeah, it did crash again. I didn't have the debugger attached. <laughs> oh, it disappeared. I jump. Let's see how the textures look. Maybe it's another bug with the cat 
jumping. This looks pretty good. If you ask me, except that the cat is glitching away, but I can fix that. Also, the little shaking you see sometimes from left to right is also a physics problem. That will be addressed. Yeah, that seemed to work pretty good. Okay, so mirror and clamp. What does mirror repeat do? Repeat, okay, repeat will put this part again here and then clamp to that. So I want mirror clamp, not, I mean, repeat with mirror and then repeat the thing outside and take some, maybe some mean value of whatever is here and on the other side of it. I don't want that. I think the only problem here is that the cat is, uh, has a bug in the animation. Yeah, so let's go to game in it, and we will look at jump. Okay, jump is has three frames. Three frames. Let's look at cat. J -j 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 jump. It has three frames, but I think there's a bug in the. I think there's a bug in this one. Yeah, here you go. If charge is done, then it says, so if the charge up for the jump, the jump animation is not very good. But if that stuff is done, then it says the frame to three. It should be two because it's zero, one, two. Right. Here you go. Chup, chup, chup. Oh, it's much cuter now. Hey, kitty. Hup. Excellent. That works. And I think my textures are happy now clamp your tile pixel art I guess is the answer it's very nice I'm gonna do some git stuff what do we have it I'm just first I'm gonna save the level Get this. Okay, so I do my clamp. This is in load texture, which which all my texture loads go through. That's fine. And then I have my selected blocks. I have fixed my jump bug. I have my function to select a random block. Mm, I have this to select an index. I loop over them all. I do some change the indentation of the whole Europe let's go this uh, uh, editor fixes on stream plus bug fixes to animation something like that wait did did I git status git add I forgot this one git commits dash dash amend so let's just put this also in there, push it. I did a stupid, I amended my uh, already pushed commit. It doesn't matter, it's only me looking at this repo so I can force push. I'm gonna go look at the repo just in case how it looks. Yeah, it's all fine. If I'm on my laptop, I use this one. And on this one, I use some other. Yeah, some Gravatar email thing, I think. Which user is happening. Cool beans. So th that was much easier than I thought to fix the. The glitching. Right. Oh. Oh, I want to investigate the F6 crash. Okay, that works. If I go in here, click, it works. 
if I go over here, rebuild, then I can't write to it. And I click F6, it doesn't work. I click save and then F6, nothing happens. Okay, so what I will do, I will dis unattach this, build. I want to catch this crash. I, I, I don't know what's causing it. Uh, and then I reconnect to, where did it? Did it crash? But why? Something is wrong. This one is still happy. It's my cat game. Press F6. Crash! Okay, this is what I wanted. It's copying a slice. Reset tracking. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay. So it's resetting the tracking allocator, which is fine. That's the one that checks for memory leaks. Okay, so what's key here? What's value? Ugh. Okay. Not helping much. Mode error. Alloc none. Alignment size. Memory. Location. Line. Is that li is this, this line correct? Let's check. Editor entities is a dynamic thing. Shut down, game shut down. So I think this should be allowed. I, 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 I make a dynamic list of entities, right? Then I add to it and then I take the slice of the whole thing, put that inside here. And this is line, this is where it this is where it is allocated. Why does that crash? Shouldn't... It, this might be wrong also, but I think this is correct. The location it hasn't... The memory hasn't been squashed. Right. This one is just supposed to say where I leaked memory, not... What? What is even... What's even the problem here? What's the... Value.size, okay. 256, value.location, which is some kind of file path. Is it? Is it maybe unrelated to the tracking? Is it because I hot reload that the file path? Okay, I think maybe. Yeah, maybe that's the case. So, maybe I need to reset my tracking allocator whenever I do a hot reload. Which is, would be here. 
let's try that. Uh, main dot Odin. Did that actually come with? I don't trust Visual Studio. Yes. Maybe it, maybe it is a memory leak combined with it reloading. We shall see. Because I think I saw a memory leak there now. <laughs> it leaked like. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's get cracking. I have uh, I put this always on top. And then we go. Ten ninety four. Okay, so we have appended to walls here. This shutdown game shutdown. Okay, so here we delete world dot walls. Oh, okay. We can't check. We we're not resetting the game when we don't. We are not resetting the game when we do a normal hot reload. That would be because the whole point is to keep the same memory, right? Uh, so maybe I should just reset the tracking allocator and wait for the real reset that happens later when we press F6 or reset, turn off, shut down the game. I think that's the correct idea here. So we go to reset tracking allocator and then we run tracking allocator clear instead there. And then we do this. And then, can I hot reload this? I don't think so. Uh, what happens if I do this? Okay, let's just do that. Many funny bugs. Yeah, now it didn't complain. It's good. If I press F6, then we should get some. Hopefully, should get some memory leaks. If the shutdown didn't do it correctly. Here you go. One, two, one, two, five. In game, not in main. One, one, zero, two, five. Okay, so this editor entity is not clear. That's we knew that. So we go here and editor memory entity entities. Okay, fix the first one. And then. One five nine two one five nine two selected blocks in the editor memory shut shut down editor memory okay so we need to delete mem dot editor memory dot selected blocks that should doodly do it See, <sighs> I should really stop. Make this one stop uh, spewing, and so I can see my memory leaks easier. This is the old one, I think. Yeah, so that's all good. Mm. That's very nice. So many small things fixed. The big thing now to fix that's broken is the physics. But I can't fix that on stream because I will... Well, let's see here. What do I need to do? I almost started on it before. So I need to look up how to do like the GJK stuff. And... Uh, 
collision uh, resolving stuff. And I need to make that work uh, with what I have. Uh, the hard part is getting is the algorithms to work nicely, I think. Uh, unless maybe there is like a Odin Lang box to the Jakob Tomso. He's been watching my stream before. He says he has, has Jakob from Prague. Maybe not. This is just a demo. Demo. Why? Oh, uh, Ginger Bill is saying something about. Hmm. It doesn't seem to exist a nice any box 2D binding, but box 2D is a whole physics engine. It does so many things that I don't think I need. So I I've implemented like GJK and EPA stuff before. So uh, I should be fine without all those. And maybe I, if I want like stacking of physical boxes, maybe I can make a a a a, a resolver that does that later. Uh, because currently I mostly need the cat to not to be able to walk around on things, jump, and then I need uh, ov collision overlap detection and such. And I can do all that myself. Um, yeah. Let's see, how, how long have I been streaming now? For... One hour, 15 minutes, okay. Maybe I will do something less, uh, okay, less bug fixy. So I have this stuff to paint different, I have this stuff to paint different, uh, where's my chat? I lost my chat. There we go. Um, I can paint with different things like this, but maybe I want to make like a background in here, which looks like a cave. Uh, one thing I don't really like in 2D games is when you have platforms that float like nothing. A uh, good example here is... So, the stuff over here, inside this cave, I could put like a nice background here that looks a bit like rock. Then it looks like this is a protruding cave. These things I wouldn't have. Maybe the, if they had like a pillar in the background behind them going up. Like some kind of mushroom from Morrowind. Who knows? Uh, then that would be fine. But I never want them to just fly in thin air. Because then you make Mario and that's not what we're doing, I think. Let's uh, boot up what I call the world's best program, a sprite. Uh, we open my source data. Now go up one. Level art. Is it this one that has all of them? No. So there's one badly named tile that has all of them inside uh, that I use for reference. Ah, I don't think I saved it. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Let's just make a big one so I can have something to work in. Or maybe I open my mock-up. Mm. And then I open 
level. I open all these. I want. Ugh, why can't I? A sprite. What? A sprite was the best program, but I couldn't multi-select. Skip. 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 Don't show this alert again. Skip. 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 Okay, and then I press press place my mock-up here. I want to mock do some mock-up in my mock-up. Mm. Hmm. Why is it? I keep saying this is the best program ever, but it's like why is this? Why are these so zoomed out? View, show, whatever. I just want to find tile corner. This one. Take this one. Paste it in here. Good. Take another tile. Play. Place it in here. Good. Another one. Doesn't matter if they repeat right now. So, I want to make some kind of background for this. I think that this should maybe hang down a bit, like this. Very nice. Like that, maybe. And then, I will look at some colors over here. And maybe I will do like this, paint straight over the poor cat. Na, 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 na. Do da, do da. Uh, this is that color. This is that color. This is this color. It should go down in. Then we can do like. Like that. And this one can also go down a bit like this. Just making it a bit cavey. And in here, maybe we add like a bit like this. Oh, it is painting. I'm just blind. I'm like, oh, it's nothing is happening. Make it a bit bigger. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to take the, is this the scatter brush. Whoops. And we scatter it a bit. Maybe I take this like that. Scatter. Oh, it looks like a thing you need to progress in FES almost. Like a QR code. That's not what we're doing here. Is there a hotkey? R. And then maybe we do like some some stuff like this. Hmm. Finally, go look between this one and that one. It's not a big difference, but maybe if we. So it's this and that, this and that, this and that, this and that. Okay, so we go here maybe. Mmm, delicious. And then we jumble, 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 jumble. Mmm. Here you go. Raise this, clean it up a bit. 
<coughs> Looking good, yeah. Maybe it's not standing out enough. Like, this is supposed to be our roof edge here. But I'm going to go with this to start. And we'll see. So 16 pixels is here. So we're going to have to... Wait, do I... I don't think I need to re-export these. I think I need to start from down here. Because that would be very good. So here you have 16. Can I have some, some A sprite expert can maybe tell me if I can slice this up like chip 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 and get out like um yeah you know what I mean yeah I don't know so I'm just gonna do this so in level art and we say uh, cave one plus PNG Take this one, 16 by 16, go here, paste, and I saved over it, cave2.png, undo, save again, cave1.png. Okay, we'll make a new file instead, cave3.png. Whoops. Uh, uh, not sure how these are gonna tile, to be honest. I don't think they are. Like, like this, it needs this angle here, but inside, like over here, we'll see about that. And maybe I will uh, make them tile somehow. cave4.png cave6.png and then I don't need this one because it's it's only half a tile let's see yeah we have that we click save I think I can hot reload this and I have all my cave pieces in here And then I can do this. <sighs> Wait, is there... Oh yeah, this is correct now. And there's supposed to be... Where is... This one, is that, oh, it's this one. Okay. So I think I need like, one that's like down here as well. Cause it needs to be a bit straighter. Cave7.png, save exit the mode reset uh, so slow need to be able to like hold shift so it oh wait, wait 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 we're not in the correct layer even we need to be at like layer minus two so let's just redo all this do that do this do this flip 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 uh, flip, and then I take these two with my nice tooling here. <clears throat> I only have one for the inside. Would you look at that? I can flip some of these. Mm. 
Then I need a internal something here. Right. Save. To run there with my cat now. You need exciting music when you run in games. Ah ha ha! They all have collision. Hmm. Okay. Things. Um, things in the layers behind maybe should never have collision. Let's make that an assumption and go to skip collision. So that's something I added yesterday. It's a bit of a hack. So here's the layer, skip collision. Um, I can make the lay skip. Okay, let's just do this. If skip collision or w dot layer is less than zero. Now, I can run inside here. That's quite nice. Um, something I want to work on someday is this camera. Currently look at the camera it's sort of trailing ahead so if I run this if I run to the left the camera is lagging behind but when you're running to the left if I run to the right I probably want to see more to the right because that's the direction I'm running in so what you probably want to do is um, take the input you're currently holding down and move the camera a bit in front and predict using that where you, where you, where you want to look and that way the character you will you will see further in direction you want to run and the character will actually feel a bit less slow because of uh, uh, how the camera behaves just it's just a re relative motion thing uh, okay quite happy with that Okay, so one thing I'm wondering here is, uh, you see these textures, I want to update these. I will replace these. I, I know I can't, if I want to replace them, then I can't do that. But I want to be able to do like hot reload texture. So I think I can do that by just, I have a load texture function. Load texture takes the path and all that, and then puts it in here. So maybe, Maybe I can There's two ways to do this. Either so it's in game init currently that I just like low texture a lot of times. But I could instead um I could throw all these into a function and I could unload them all and then reload them. That would work. However, then I can't like uh, dynamically load any textures, not in here. So I think instead I will do like this. Here's load texture, here's the path. Here's the asset storage textures equals text. So then I will be like texture, texture asset is a struct that has a text that is an RL dot texture. And also has a path that is a string, right? outside um, so here it loads the texture and then this one should be from hash to texture asset and then I should do like texture asset text equals text path equals path now not sure about this memory here because path Sure, I clone it to a C string here, but I I need to clone the whole string. Clone. Okay. Strings dot clone path. I think that should do it right. Mm. Mm. 
Cannot us Aha, get so get texture needs to return text.text. Unload texture needs to do v.text. This one also needs to do re v.path. It's a delete for a string. Yeah, it's a string is sort of like an array of characters. So delete is for array lock things. Free is for like one of allocations in Odin. So here I, and this one here I in order to load the texture I need to it needs a C string uh, fed into Rayleigh. But then I just clone it to a C string using a temp allocator which is clear each frame so that I don't have to care about that. Okay, this probably still works. Just gonna save this. Right. Now, if I go to like main, I think in here, I have is key pressed F6. Okay, F7, does that do anything in the game? No. F4 maybe is better. F4 I can use due to like a whole texture reload. Update, update game. Uh, if rl is key pressed dot f4 load game load texture this one needs to reload all those textures now I realize that maybe what does clone to C string usually take? The normal allocator. Okay. Uh, path sister. Path sister. I don't need C string. I don't need to do it like that. I think this will suffice. And then I can do like reload textures. It's a procedure. And then I go through all of them. Mr. Potter was a bad Alan Rickman. And I uh, I unload v.txt and then I say v.txt equals rl.load texture v.path. And I don't return that. Uh, for text in assets of in textures text of text 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 Ooh, for if whatever cool bull okay mm -hmm. key value 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 it was a Uh, okay, so I think in Odin, if you want to have the point, even if you are looping over an array of things, if I want these to be the pointers to the things in the array, then I put the ampersand in front of the array, then both these two will actually be pointer types. This is also true in normal for loops in a list or something in an array. So, F4. Reload textures. Okay. Crash. Why though? Okay, we will boot it again and see if it. Why did it crash there? <laughs> I don't know really. I really don't. The key is the hash. 
and I've taken the pointer to the value so I can change the value any way I want. I know what it might be. It might be that something has already gotten this texture as an let's look RL dot texture. Hmm. Houston, we got a problem. You see this animated sprite contains an RL dot texture. Make animated sprite. So Okay, all the places where we currently say rl.texture, they don't work because that texture will be invalid. Maybe we could store a pointer to it, but here this is a map in asset storage. And this can get reallocated and then all these move and then the pointer to the texture moves. <laughs> so that doesn't work either. Oh, no resource management. What you probably want is a, a, a integer type handle to a texture that you never, the only thing you're allowed to save is that handle and then you look it up. Uh, when you need it shouldn't even be the hash like you shouldn't instead of texture you shouldn't use the hash as texture handle because then you have to do a lookup into a binary sorted uh, map you just want an index <clears throat> so you have to build some little system that has like a list of textures plus a free list where it brings them out and you get an index and stuff like that. Why didn't I think of this before? Where do I use RL, RL dot texture? So load texture returns it. That's wrong. Get texture returns it. Should return a handle, so it's wrong. Editor block has a texture that's wrong. Editor entity has a placeholder texture that's wrong. Render object texture has a texture that's wrong. Animated sprites texture that's wrong. Make animated sprites is the same thing. This is the yeah, this probably comes from an animated sprite or from the tile set. And then you have texture. It's not that I can fix it. It's fine. It's fine, really. I will just make sure that get texture and load texture down they return a handle into a thing, into a list. That's well good. I think I'm gonna go make some tea or something. So I'm gonna do like this. Say Five min break making tea. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Be right back.
what's my teapot? Teapot. Teapot. Making tea, I am making tea, making tea and checking Twitter, making tea, making tea, making tea, making tea, making tea, making tea. Making
You know what's really good? The uncharted menu music. Na, 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 na. Today I listened to lots of the Kiffness. I listened to his uh, the guy that makes remix of cats and stuff. It's very good. I put it on my um, amplifier in my kitchen and blast. Very nice. Okay, I'm back. see what we have five min break over okay this t will run for maybe two more minutes 2140 it will be done and then i will forget about it okay i said that we will do like a uh, we will make an index we will make an index that uh, goes into the thing here so we get textures by index that we can randomly uh, that we can uh, index in without going through a map or something. Mm. Mm. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, the asset storage. This is sort of a global thing. Asset storage is lives inside game memory and it's also a pointer here and this pointer is set each time around update that way I can hot reload without that pointer dying because when you hot reload the pointer glo pointer is in global scope will poop but this set resets it uh, I could also have a function that's like uh, hot reload happened and then it would do this but hey whatever so Let's do something like that. Well, let's uh, the textures maybe should be a dynamic array of RL dot texture, and this is a texture lookup. How about them? How 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 about that? Because if I do like this, uh, then I think it will work fine. <clears throat> I will also need a free list uh, because I'm not allowed to shrink the textures array because I don't want to reallocate it. So I need a free list as well. I will add that. Uh, but we will see here okay so here comes load texture load texture brings out a hash and an index do I, what when do i use the hash i use the hash here you need to know when you use your variables okay so I need to return a hash still. That's fine. Then we will do like this. We'll define ex texture handle is a distinct int. Distinct means that it won't do automatic type conversions between this integer and other integers. I have to do a manual cast. This brings type safety to functions and stuff. So. So, so, so like that. Have a texture handle. I still clone. Oh shit! T two minutes past. So I'm I'm uh, brewing uh, in my cup. There is a Taekwon Ying, I think it's called Chinese green tea. Mm. Not in the white cup, but I'm gonna put my used tea leaves into there. So I wanted to drink it out. It's a neutral Chinese green tea. Very nice. You just brew it for two to three minutes. And it's uh, at 70 to 80 degrees. There you go. 
Actually, I think 70 degrees is better. But I, I, I have, um, uh, I have this. This is my. Here's my teapot, and I put this hoodie that has cats on it on top of it. And it keeps it warm. But it's, it's still, if you want to have it warmer for a bit longer, you brew it at 80 instead of 70. But that's not what we're doing here. We're doing programming. Okay. Okay. So we have the we load the texture at the path here. And then we set the texture wrapping that we did earlier today. Then we hash the path. I don't think it matters that we hash the Odin string instead of the C string. The hash function does the transmute into a byte array, but uh, yeah, whatever. And then we say textures at H, which is the hash is this. So texture asset TA is still this. It's a texture and a path. Good. And then we say uh, texture the ha hash. You call this one huh? text hash na uh, path hash. We call this. Use that one there, and then we say. Handle, handle is the cost texture handle. The length of asset storage dot textures. That's our handle. Then we say hand, and then at textures handle we put ta. Uh, but uh, if then we need the, the free list. So this will not work because it can't it can't do this because this handle is not of int type, it's that distinct int. But I will cast it, but first I will do this textures free list. It's a dynamic array of dynamic array of integers of, of indices. So then we do like this. If len text, if len textures asset storage textures free list, this one is greater than zero, then handle equals pop asset storage from textures free list. Else, it's this, right? So we take from the free list, or we take that, and then down here we cost. We say the integer. We cost this like that. Don't need to do this over here. We can just do like that. Compact it down a bit. Path hash. Oh yeah, this is for the lookup. What do I? What will I use the lookup for? I don't need a lookup. Wait, do I? Yes, I do. The lookup is for finding a texture asset by name hash. I. And that one needs to be from the hash to the integer into the textures array. There shouldn't be a texture asset on the right hand side here. Right. It should be like an integer. So it points where in this one do you find that one? I can't just I can't just pass an integer to like get texture because then I guess I could have a function that that this one always is like get texture and this says texture handle. You get a texture handle and then you return that one and then you have another function to kind of uh, make texture handle. And that one uses the lookup.
Does that make any sense? Let's see here. Let's think a bit. Get texture. So if get texture just had an integer instead here. And then it try to look it up using that. Ah. Then it tries to look it up using that. I don't want to store unnecessary data, that's the problem. Well, I still need the hash lookup, but I I would like the API to be a bit simpler if possible. Let's try this. Maybe we can use anyways get texture index proc. The ID is a hash and this returns a texture handle. So it's actually get texture handle. Mm. And then we can say like return asset storage dot texture lookup. ID. But I don't think this is very <clears throat> Okay, let's go over here. So to start with the lookup, it needs to go to a handle. Yeah. And then you have the lookup here, which is the hash. Do you have the hash here? You put it there. Yeah. If load texture already finds it at the hash, which one wins? It has the string. Wait, why? Oh yeah, load texture takes that one, and then this one returns a hash, and then get texture later. We'll use the hash, so it doesn't have to rehash the string. That's the whole idea here. Uh, okay. So what we will do here is. Do like this. Do da, do da. We will try to fetch first. Uh, from the lookup, we try to fetch the handle. Handle is a texture handle. So we try to fetch the handle. Handle equals texture hand text handle. So we fetch that one. Now handle is set. And then handle down here will be used to set this texture. In this case, I think I just need to reload the texture at the handle. Right. Actually, maybe I can just do this. I just unload. Because I probably want to unload the texture anyways before I load it. So I unload. I do this. And then I say text is asset storage dot textures text handle if 
text ok this is sort of you assign both ok and texture because this one returns two values and then I check if ok is true over here and then I do the thing so and load the texture handle is still set handle is still set so then I go down here it's not the most pretty code is it <sighs> we will make a reload texture function instead because this got messy, yeah, texture handle. Hmm. Okay, so we we fetch using the handle here. This one might return a bool, who knows? Turn true and this returns false. This is if it succeeded in reloading it. Wait, where did this thing go? This one has the path. Do I need the path? What does RL dot texture contain? Yeah, I need the path. So text, sorry folks. Okay, this one is already doing the correct thing. It's setting it like that. Uh, text dot takes. So we unload the texture. Then we reload it. Text dot path. Maybe we can you say that text or text equals load texture. We set the wrapping. We set the wrapping like this so it mirror clamps. And let's check. Do we need to touch anything else here? I have modified text here. So. I think I can maybe just put the ampersand here to make this one by pointer. Not sure, maybe. So, and then we do like this. We say, if reload texture text handle, then we return. Because this one returns true in that case. Oof. Maybe that will work. Load texture. Mm -hmm. This one we don't need. Get texture. Get texture uses the hash again. Yeah, let's let's see. Okay, so this one says assignment count mismatch two for one, which means that this one actually returns one thing. Is it because of this? Wait. No. I thought... Oh. It's... Uh, the map will return okay. This one will just be like... Yes, I will need to do this. If len asset storage dot textures is bigger... If cost int h is bigger or equals to that, return false. Otherwise, we do this. A 
otherwise we take texture say cause this to integer uh -huh. yes that all works nicely right and then it says uh, it's the same problem ID haha <laughs> what's this now texture lookup hash path hash okay so that works fine this one needs to return something needs to return the path hash and the text handle that should still work nicely down here it wants to reload this is we this one we use to reload all the textures in the game it unloads and then reloads. Maybe I can just do this. Uh! V, 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 V. Uh. Uh. <clears throat> Textures is a dynam aha, uh -huh. okay, okay. Four ticks in and then you do did 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 it nay like that maybe. Now my phone is calling.
Here we go. My brother called me. Uh, I had called him earlier to see if he wanted to do something. But he was in his uh, summer house, summer, Swedish summer cottage. And his cat had got a mouse and everything was very going very well. So, nothing interesting happening over there. Let's see if my sound kicks up again. Uh, let's see, where is OBS? Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, I think uh, my stream is just saying, your sound is having problems. Uh... But I think that's just because it's... Uh, I think that's just because I, I had it muted for a while. Hi Jabberin Ice Mojo. You're welcome to just hang out while you do your own dev work too. That's... Sounds very good, Ian. I'm doing... To recap, I am doing some... I did solve some bugs. Now I'm doing some... Um, Game engine asset asset uh, asset storage plumbing is what I could call it. I'm 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 trying to make sure that I only return handles to textures that are loaded, not the texture itself. So you have an index that you can just use to fetch it, and then you use that to uh, so you can reload all your textures and without the game exploding and crashing uh, yeah that's what i'm thinking of doing what is uh yeah okay uh, youtube keeps saying that my I have problems with my stream and now it says it's excellent it just said your transfer rate of audio is lower than recommended blah 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 just write in the chat if there's any problem with the sound but i don't think there is all right let's continue what was i doing for my brother called So, I have the handle here that I pop from my free list. Okay. Uh, I actually don't need to create the handle up here. I can just go down here and say that handle is a texture handle because it returns it up here. So that's all fine. Then I loop over all textures in the asset storage like this. I unload them okay this is for shut, shutting it down so then i unload the texture and i delete the path uh, the allocated c string reload textures that one loops over all these it unloads the texture i think i need to do like this because textures is a struct so this one again Point, this would be a pointer to an asset, texture asset. It unloads it and it loads, reloads it like this. And we do like this. Perfect. Getting, getting somewhere. Then we do get texture. And this brings a hash. This is a hash of a string. This one should not return... A texture. The textures, the the Raylib textures should sort of be like opaque, whatever you want to call it. They should you should never you should never handle the Raylib texture except inside this little um, asset storage system because otherwise we will run into the same problem again. So get texture takes a hash returns a texture handle. It goes to asset storage dot texture. So I'm gonna bring this one up here. Asset storage textures texture assets so it uses the id it needs to use the hash actually Te texture lookup it goes through the lookup with the id finds text texture handle um then it needs to take the, the texture handle and go into textures so it needs to return asset storage dot textures 
texture handle. It also needs to make sure that this handle is within the range of it. So we need to do if texture handle is bigger equals to len asset storage dot textures. Then we return nothing. Otherwise we return this. I should probably return kind of nil. Again, problem here. I would like to return a zero here means no texture. Again, I don't have an if there is something at the zero of texture. So I would this is a, maybe I'll look into this in between streams or something. Uh, it's nice to sort of push a nil texture to the textures array. So you can return the zero and then use it and it will just be like a blank texture or like a pink texture that says bug. Assume you must send bug. Uh. Okay, so texture handle is bigger. Okay, so this one is uh, a distinct integer. So it needs to be cost to one of a normal integer. Uh, does this wait 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 I, I saw something here I, I I go through the lookup to a texture handle and this one is supposed to return a texture handle no sir we will do this return texture handle hmm getting somewhere and then we have the three list so we pop the free list in the asset storage. I think the free list should be texture handles because it's a list of unused slots in this textures array. Like that. Okay, pop I think needs a little ampersand in front. And then we need to do path hash here. That's this one. With texture handle, it needs to go like this. Right, almost done. Except that uh, when we unload textures, we need to push the handles to the free list. We will do that very soon. Okay, what's the problem now? Okay, now comes the next problem of uh, these needs to be replaced to handles, texture handle. This one needs to be, re well, let's just compile it and fix them one by one. Placeholder in editor entity needs to be a texture handle. Make animated sprite needs to take a texture handle. Animated sprite needs to store a texture handle. Animated sprite size takes an animated sprite, fetches the texture and looks at the width. Here we get to this kind of problem, but it's not really a problem. We can just do get texture. Get texture doesn't currently. Okay. Get texture doesn't currently return the Raylib texture because. We don't want anyone to cache that, save it somewhere so it blows up later. There's two philosophies here. Either you have a function that returns it and you can say like, never store this anywhere. Or you just, we look at, what's it called? Texture in Raylib, texture, texture 2D, it's the same. Let me think. So the problem with this one is not and not the width, the height, the mip map, or the format. It's the ID. This maps to an OpenGL texture ID that my ID that might get disappear under our feet. So there's actually no problem with keeping the Raylib texture as long as you don't actually try to draw using it. But you can reload it and then the, all the sizes are off, so we're not going to do that. I'm thinking, should I do like an in get texture internal that returns this? 
or should make a like get texture with it it won't be that slow because it uh, uses the index i think yeah it does let's see what do i need here ah okay i've decided that we'll do a get texture internal actually maybe there is a difference between these because this one takes an id returns a handle this one will be like uh, handle texture handle and it will return an rl.texture yeah so if handle bigger or equals to the length of asset storage.textures then we return nothing at all otherwise we return asset storage.textures handle costed to an int And then we do like this texture is get texture internal as dot texture. So this one will return an empty one if it's not existing, which will return the width and height as zero, which might be fine in some cases. Oh, that is an int. Asset storage is this, okay. Should return the texture inside. What's happening here? Here we same same problem. Go here. Okay, we need, I need to think a bit. Render object static takes rl.texture and this texture is then cached inside. Yeah, so this one should just take a texture handle. Store that into render object texture. <clears throat> Same thing here, AES dot texture. Here we need to say get texture in turn texture handle the texture handle get the texture. There was a variation of this above here. Okay, here I fetched it from the sprite, so it's fine. Down here, we are fetching all the blocks. Uh, X equals get, get, get texture internal B dot text. like that okay now we get draw texture pro which is the feature the function that actually draws anything and this one uses the render object render object texture there's a texture handle we go here we say like text equals get texture internal o dot texture then we do like that I think that's that. Here we need to do this. Like that. Yeah. More of this. Placeholder text equals get text. Wah! Get texture internal e dot placeholder. Yeah. Getting there. This code is barely used, but we will still do this. Get texture internal ee dot placeholder. This is for uh, 
drawing the little entity placeholders that I put into the world. I might replace those with a more proper entity concept. Uh, why? Oh, here I messed up. Get texture internal e dot placeholder. Current block dot text. Okay. Block. Okay. Uh, get texture internal current block dot text. Cur cur block dot text. This is set for setting this one, so it doesn't need the. Uh, the game crashed. That's natural because it's. Uh, uh, I changed uh, the layout of the memory. Then it crashed again because it shouldn't. Then we start with the bugger. See where it blows. See, see where it blows up. Bound check. Load texture. I see the problem. It. Doesn't use append. Uh, load texture. What are you doing, Carl? This stuff goes in here. This is for setting and already reusing a slot. Then we do append. We append to storage.textures the texture asset. There we go. The only thing I haven't done yet is uh, allocate, put things into the free list. So if I press F4, I think everything reloads properly. And that's because it used reload textures. But if I free, if I like unload a single texture, then it should put it into the free list, uh, which I don't currently do, I think, because I shut down this whole thing, unload all of them. Oh well, I can I can fix it quickly. I might use this later. This is a bit premature, maybe, but rock texture handle. We unload a texture. If the handle is bigger than textures, we return. Otherwise, we. Take t equals textures cost to an int of the handle, and then we hash the t dot path. Uh, texture path hash. Here I should probably check that this texture is actually valid. As easy as done by. That we like this. If if t dot if the length of t dot path bigger than zero, then we do this. I'm gonna sneeze. Sneezing. I'm looking at the little replay in my corner of me sneezing. While I pour some tea. <laughs> All right, we are just doing the unload texture function to 
that won't be used much right now, but I will put it in the free list. I'm just looking if anything has happened on my internet chats and stuff. Mm-hmm. 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 Nothing there. Just Raylib server. It's very nice. My favorite Discord server is the Odin Discord server. The Odin programming language. It's a nice channel for game development where you can ask general questions about game development. There's one of GPU programming in Odin where people also talk about GPU APIs. It's I learned like direct 3D 12 and stuff in there from some very talented people. Now I'm using Raylib, but I did some rendering experiments before. There's a nice beginner's channel for asking noob questions. Some fun random channels and a discussion channels for more advanced stuff. There's a showcase channel for showing off your projects where everyone is very enthusiastic about what you do. The Raylib server is also very good. Also has a nice show off channel and you can ask questions and the Ray who has made Raylib welcomes everyone and to the server and um, and uh, he almost always congratulates you whenever you post uh, progress in the Made with Raylib channel. It's a very nice combination, Odin and Raylib. Very nice people in all the chats and stuff. Okay. Thank you for blessing me. Mm. And my sneeze. Right. Texture path hash. So we have hashed the path. Now we can now we can look so I want to unload the texture. Then we can say delete T uh, asset storage dot texture lookup texture path hash. I would maybe like to store the hash inside the texture so I can just delete the key without calculating the hash. Maybe. So here we have the textures. So I've, I've, I've killed the lookup. And then I say that the text, then I say that the textures at int age equals to nothing. And then I append to asset storage punct textures free list. I append age. Uh, okay. This one also, of course, needs the asset storage in front. Okay, I'm thinking of maybe storing the hash in here. So I don't have to calculate it here. Because, yeah, if I can look up the texture then it's in the lookup and then it needs yeah so we do path hash uh, is a hash so t dot path hash if t dot path hash is not zero not looking at the length of it <clears throat> like that we delete the key then we go into textures blow out the texture asset and then we add it to the free list and the free list is used in load texture and it pops it out of there the only thing we need to do now is look at texture asset and add, we need to add the path hash into there path hash equals path hash there and there do we use it anywhere else Here's the path. We reload the texture sometimes, but that's not gonna change the path hash. Okay, this should all work. 
asset storage dot textures. Right. That was a long detour. Like an extra hour of work. So now I can press F4. Doesn't do anything it looks like. But then I jump, 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 jump. Right, this one looks wrong. I think I just haven't turned it. Save. Okay. So what I wanted to do was to experiment in a sprite with. I wanted to uh, change this graphic and uh, re reload it. So here is this one. Uh, maybe I remove these. Go here. Reload. Bam. Nice. Maybe I want to do like this. Uh, not F. Not F for an a sprite. Uh huh. That's nice. Uh, I want two variations of this one, I think. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go in here, maybe. And then paste it here. And do like this. And then do a little bit like that, maybe. It's too much. Mm -hmm. And then we do cave8.png. Then we can... You know it would be really nice if I enter the editor and I don't have... It doesn't update my... The available tiles. But I think I can do that. I just need to refresh the the block database. See if we can do it with hot reload. Active game in it. So, what does this one do? This one takes blocks. This one takes blocks. It goes into lever or loads all the textures in there and then appends to blocks. So, if I take all this and do like reload blocks, uh, reload, how uh, do they call it? Blocks, proc, yeah, yeah. And then we take a mem game memory. Yeah, yeah. Reload blocks. And it will also do a delete. Wait, it needs to unload all the textures. For TIA in tiles. Unload texture. We were unloading textures. T. What's a, what's a tile? Uh, editor block. Texture handle. T dot text. Uh, and then we do delete mem dot. Blocks mem dot editor memory dot blocks, and then we make a new one here. We don't actually need to do make this dynamic before here and then assign it as a. Well, maybe I'd need to make it a slice that's not edit dynamic. Maybe. Mm. So there we go. We need to also bring this one up here. Wait a minute. This one needs to be like this. <sighs> Editor memory has blocks, right? Editor block, yeah. So this one goes over all the blocks and the tiles are down here. Goes through all the tiles. Blah, blah, blah. And then it does this. It just reloads the blocks with the memory. And then b.takes. Yeah, so I can still reload that. There's no change in here. But now I can go down here and we can... Where is my... Okay, let's go to game update. Here is my F4 and then I say if rl.is key pressed... Why don't I do it in the both in the same time? Reload blocks mem. So now I have these. I. <laughs> Mama, my game broke. What happens if I press it again? Mother of God.
Why does this happen? It's unloading the textures and reusing the slots. Is that it? Wait, did I just break my whole game? No, I didn't press save, so it's probably fine. I have save in my editor now. I'm a grown-up. We're just innocent men. Mm. Okay. So, let's make sure F4 does not do this. It... Uh, yeah. I'm gonna make sure that doesn't happen. Reload blocks. It appends to blocks with a texture handle. What is written into the level level out texture? That's a hash. Each block has a hash. Am I accidentally replacing the wrong texture? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Load texture. Wait. This one reloads it using the same... Uh, it reloads the texture. Texture handle. Texture asset. Path hash. Okay. So when we want to draw in draw world. Now we're down here. Then we say get texture internal. And then we use this. This one goes via texture handle into textures and fetches a texture the whole point of this is that this is supposed to work because it uses this handle to get a texture right uh, the textures list in here is never changed except down here but then it's put at the end but it's fine. Then it's put at the end, so that is fine. Uh, this one does a load texture. This one does. Load texture. So sometimes that stream says that my bitrate is lower than I recommended and that they recommend a higher bitrate. But does that mean I should increase my bitrate or does it mean that my internet connection is shitty? I have a good internet connection, like super duper fiber. So maybe I can do higher. Let's open OBS and see. This is not going to show my stream key, is it? No, that's good. Uh, okay, streaming, video bitrate. This one says that it recommends 9,500. Let's see if my stream blows up now. <clears throat> I'm just looking at my I have my control panel for my stream over here and it uh, maybe I need to restart the stream for this to happen do, 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 do. It doesn't say anything yet. It's a quite a high bitrate, maybe 9,500, but... Uh, then the audio bitrate is a bit low, I would say. I I come from the uh, land of MP3s that needed to be at least 192. 
I would like to one two five six pitch rate. Uh, but three twenty is. Uh, I have a very good internet connection. I'm gonna try three twenty bit rate. You just poof, best audio in this uh, part of the world. Yeah. Let me know if there's anything funny with the stream now. But it says it just improved. It's, everything is green now. So. Now we go back to this. Why does it jumble up like this? Okay, it runs reload blocks when I press F4. This reloads all textures, which means it unloads every single texture. And then it reloads the texture using the path and sets it all up. Uh, does that matter? There. Texture, um, texture, texture handle as a texture asset. That is the path, and it will unload that one. It will unload this one, and then this one will, and it will reload it onto that one with the path. The path will stay the same, and the hash will stay the same. I can I don't I don't I don't think it's that. So then we go to reload blocks. This one will unload textures. Unload texture I just wrote. Unload texture will return if the handle is bigger than textures. Bigger or equals textures. And then it will take the texture and it will delete the key from the lookup if it if the path hash is non zero. Then it will zero out the texture and then it will put it on the free list. Yeah, it's good. Wait, is that a, is that allowed? Then it will, hmm, maybe it's this. Then we'll put it on the free list. It will put it on the free list and I'm just looking at my stream preview if it's... Ah, it seems happy. It puts it on the free list. But that handle might still point to something that's using that one. Right. So if you want to reuse a handle, you need to reassign the handle of the thing. Which is sort of what I want to do. Isn't it? No. Wait, is it? Editor block. <clears throat> Has a name and a texture handle. That's uh, editor blocks are these things in here. Right. And I reload all those, but those also have a name hash that is used by the actual things that are drawn. And those will use the lookup. Let's have a look. The things that are drawn will use the lookup to get the internal texture from a texture handle, like this, and return the texture. Yeah. But then the hand, the texture at that handle might change slightly. I'm gonna be tired. Let's see if I can solve this. I believe in myself. Okay. Uh, more tea. Maybe more tea fixes it. Um, so that one gets the internal texture, which might have been replaced because of me unloading textures. So I think I have some problem here. I don't think I can just reuse a texture handle before it is no longer used. This is like... 
reference counting problem or or finding all the places where it is used and then reinsert the texture handle I think or am I wrong Reinsert the two because editor block has the texture handle, but then also so has the anything that uses this texture handle. Editor block, render object texture, animated sprites. It won't be animated sprites, but it can be in this case, it won't be animated sprites because those come from animations, but it might be editor block and render object texture might use the texture handle wasn't the whole point of this to have an indirection so I don't need this doesn't happen do I need some kind of reference counting of this I don't like reference counting. That's the problem. But who likes it really? Um, Hmm. Okay. I reloaded all my textures. All I got was this lousy. Can I reload the textures without moving the handle, maybe? Is that what I need to do? Wait a minute, can I do that? Reload blocks. So this one, load texture here, will take this and make a hash out of it and all that. Unload texture here, this is the only one that pushes on the free list. If I run load texture, then it will reload the texture in place with the same handle uh. yeah, so unload texture could. Unload texture could not. One idea here is that unload texture doesn't actually unload it and just keeps it as it is, and then, and then I don't know. But for sure, it will work if I just do load texture instead. I used to load texture. I skip this part. I think this will work. And then I take all the tiles and I go over them. And I say that blocks, I add to blocks, the editor blocks. Yeah. I don't even think I need to make a new editor blocks list because this load texture with will take the path okay, let's try this yeah this seems to work so it just reloads it in place 
What I wanted to do now was to use this one, flip it. That looked like shit. Uh, go back to a sprite. Paint it. Paint it in. No! What's happening? This is the best program. There you go. Yeah, that's quite a, that's quite good. I also need to do more uh, graphic stuff here where I need uh, something to go along this edge. This edge, this edge, something for the floor maybe. Like I need a whole cave thing. Uh, and this one is not in the minus two layer. Hmm. But I'm pretty happy with that. For how it looks. Kitty got a mouse. Um I think I'm gonna need like a more efficient render at some point that uh uh takes a tile set and sort of uh does some instantiated rendering of it all because this currently just goes through with them one by one and just draws the shit. Um so I don't think that's gonna work. Oh let me try something here if this looks reasonable. No it doesn't really but it looks less. I can do this and then. Yeah, it doesn't. Meow, 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 meow. Kitty caught the mouse. Singing Kifness songs. Just go away, laga laga laga. I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do, so I say hey laga laga. Is this when is this when the um it blocks my sound because I I sing copyright music. Okay. This is just uh, temporary. I want to have nicer things that go along the edges here. And the the colors are a bit... Uh, it's a bit hard to tell where this starts up here and stuff. But you know. That's a start. Okay. I have so many more things to do. It's, it's just crazy. Uh, I have the waterfall stuff so if you go back to my mock-up 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 here we go here's my mock-up here where i stand there's supposed to be a it's supposed to be a bridge with a waterfall and a waterfall is supposed to be a character you can talk to and the waterfall is supposed to be this big animated entity or something or maybe I just animate the center of it not sure I need to do that. And then I need to implement some kind of dialogue system for talking to the waterfall. And there will also be some other characters like the squirrel and some stuff that you talk to. Yeah. And then I want to do some foliage, like you have this little plant here, like that sits. Maybe animate it a bit. So much to do. But it'll be fine. Hmm. So what I've done here today is I fixed some graphics bugs where you got lines in between the when the camera moved you got like you saw between the tiles. I fixed so that uh, the mirroring of tiles work so that we can have tiles facing both this way and this way that works. I have fixed 
a bug in the animation of the cat jump animation. I've added, I've drawn in a sprite these background tiles and I've used them in here. This is the only place where I think they should be. Uh, I have uh, done other things I don't remember. Oh yeah, I added a new texture uh, texture handle uh, in direction system so I can actually reload my texture. I press F4 now and it actually reloads all textures in the game. And now then I can change them in a sprite and press this button and it will it it uh, reloads them in here. So that way I c that way I can tweak them. Like I can do I can do this. Open cave eight and we take the red marker and we add a smiley face. That press F4. You get a smiley face. Undo. So that's all good. Mm hmm. Any questions before I end the stream? Because it's almost three hours now, I think. It's uh, seven fifty, eight fifty, nine fifty, ten fifty. Oh, wait, eight fifty, nine fifty, ten fifty. Yeah, it's three hours now. Five minutes ago. I'll probably stream again on during the next weekend. It's a bit unclear which day I like because I think Saturday and Sunday evenings are better. More folks can watch and the people in uh, countries that don't work like if I stream in the evening here then maybe people from the US can join during the day. But I also like streaming on Fridays because then I uh, get the uh, I like uh, showing what I've done since last time and then I can do, have some time on Saturday to 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 do some of the things I didn't have time to do on the stream so it becomes this sort of motivation for myself. But may it's th this weekend I did both. I streamed yesterday and today. Today I've been fixing bugs and fixing editor and stuff. Hmm. So it's all good. But yeah. So we uh, are continuing our making our game with Odin programming language, Raylib uh, rendering library, and a sprite for making graphics. I think you should try out uh, the Odin programming language. Great for making games. Raylib, uh, it comes with bindings for Raylib. You can just uh, do like import vendor colon Raylib, and you will be able to use this. Um, load texture and you can draw textures and take input and open windows and all that. And in Odin I'm also using Hot Reload a lot, which you can see. It's not the Hot Reload of the textures that you saw, but Hot Reload of like uh, gameplay logic and stuff. So we have like game update. Uh, I don't have good examples, but uh, we can change the gradient in the background. This will now suddenly go poof. I got blue because that's the clear color here. So instead of drawing the gradient, it did that. And I can even make this one always on top with a key binding like that. And then used to work uh, like that. We can go like this, change the change this one, the clear color. See now it's green. All that. Very nice, very nice with hot reload. It fails sometimes when I change struct layouts or if uh, memory moves around a lot, but quite often it's I'm making UI stuff where I use tweaking function behavior or I'm tweaking gameplay stuff where I use tweaking function behavior. And I also have a button to reset the game without restarting it that refreeze all the memory and resets it which I use when the struct layouts change. So that's all good. Let me show you the last thing here, how, you, how I go to space. I go over here and there's supposed to be a rocket somewhere here. I think it's supposed to be here, but I think it's hidden here as so I press up. Then the cat goes into the spaceship. 
this go makes me control the spaceship and I can accelerate and then I'm in space like this and then I can go back and forth and this will be the next game mode after you will plant this spaceship is an onion you will plant it you will grow and then you will fly to space to find a new onion seed for your friend squirrel whose house has been cut down by deforestation so you have to to be this little adventure help your friend get the new house meow okay reset this is this is a uh, squirrel's old tree stump his old house for squirrel and it will be lots of i have, haven't done graphics before really i've just done some pixel art stuff so i am um, uh, especially animations is first time animating so some of these animations i'm quite happy with this climb up animation ah no i went into the spaceship uh this one I will color the cat and make it all blend together a bit, but I like this jump up, boop, like that. It's quite nice. I don't like the running animation. This is the first, and I made this animation, the, the walking one, on the plane back from GDC, from San Francisco to Sweden. Don't like it much. I will make remake it into something where, you know, kind of more like a cat kind of galloping or whatever you call it. Uh, maybe I will have two different speeds, one for when you have your... Uh, controller joystick just slightly uh, slightly Im slight input and a lot of inputs and then maybe uh, tweak the speeds of them and stuff but yeah it's gonna be a nice game and i i'm making everything myself graphics graphic code graphics game design and i have a piano over here and a guitar and i will use those someday too or maybe I will outsource the music to my girlfriend, who is a fantastic pianist. But uh, then I will credit her, because you should credit your spouse helpers. Okay. I, there are no questions in the chat. So I will now open OBS and press the button that ends it all. And I will see you next live stream, where I will do... I will work more on this game. And... Uh, follow me on Twitter or uh, join one of the, Dis the Odin or the Rayleigh Discord service if you want to talk to that those communities or whatever. And I'll see you around. Bye-bye.